The world of property development has changed dramatically over the last 20 years, with buy to let mortgages becoming available, enabling many people to purchase a property for investment purposes. But what does that really mean, and how can we find a good opportunity? My name is John Howard, and I've been developing and investing since my 18th birthday. In a career that spanned over 40 years, I bought and sold over 3,500 properties across the UK. In this program, I'll be taking you to the place where my journey started and giving you the basics of how you can get started too and establish what type of developer you wish to be. I'll also be showing you where you can find your first deal. Welcome to sunny Felixstowe. I haven't brought you down here just to buy you an ice cream. There's a good reason for it. My first property deal ever, when on my 18th birthday, was this property behind you here. I bought two flats. I sold one flat off immediately to someone else and virtually got the other one for free. I still love doing property deals like this today. They're hard to find, but when you can buy something which is two or more properties, Together, you can break them up and hopefully make a lot of money. From Felixstowe to this, 150 flats on Ipswich waterfront called the Wine Rack. Now it got the nickname the Wine Rack because the original developer had built the concrete frame and then went bankrupt. So from a distance, it looked for 10 years like a wine rack. So we've retained the name when we bought it off the receiver and we have spent around 27 million pounds finishing the project. But we're not here to talk about my development. Let's discuss one of the first aspects you need to consider, the type of developer or investor you wish to become. The first thing you have to do is decide what you want to do yourself. What type of property developer or investor you want to be? Do you want to build new, new houses? Do you want to convert listed buildings? Have you got an interest in history, for instance? Do you want to HMOs? It's really up to, up to you to do exactly what you want to do. Without you knowing, how on earth can anyone else help you? It really is important to get on the right line to start with on what you wish to do yourself. For me, it was always flats. Flats, flats and more flats. That's how I've ended up here doing 150 flats in a new development on Ipswich Waterfront. Okay. This site isn't 150 flats, it's 14 flats. It's a conversion and it's done with permitted developments. This means that you don't need planning permission. You put in your warranty and your scheme and they have to give you permission with 28 days as long as it's an office at the moment and you're converting it to residential. Remember, the principles of developing are the same, whether I'm doing 150 flats, 14 flats or three flats. The builder has to be organized and disciplined. And a quick tip for you, he should keep the site tidy. If the site isn't tidy, the chances are they won't be on time when they finish the job and they'll be in chaos during the job. When I started out in my career, I never thought I would be developing 100 plus blocks of flats. However, that's what's happened. And as long as you become an expert in your field, there's lots of ways to make money out of property. Talking about experts in their field, to demonstrate my point, I'm going to take you to a site which I purchased without planning permission and sold on to a friend of mine. Let's see what he's got planned. Matt, great to see you here. You are a young developer who's really got on and made some great decisions. One of your best decisions you've made, Matt Parnell, as far as I'm concerned, is buying this site off me, which I bought without planning permission, and then obviously sold it to you with planning, and you're the one who's going to make a huge profit out of it. Congratulations. Thank you, John. Obviously, I've only really ever done flats and conversions. I've done very little new build. You, on the other hand, are the new build developer. Uh, a young aspiring developer there aren't that many of you about in my view most people seem to be involved in HMOs 
uh, buy to lets and so on. It's great to meet and know someone like yourself. Yeah, it's a, it's a slightly different strategy from yours, John. Um, I mean, basically, I, I qualified as a mortgage advisor about 13 years ago, and having done a five-year stint in a corporate estate agency, I ended up seeing lots of deals come through the door. And uh, yeah, we you know we pick up pick up these things every so often. Obviously, as you say, this site we we bought off you subject to planning permission. Now. At the, at the time, we did go in for planning over the last sort of 12 months. We went in for planning for nine houses. Unfortunately, that got refused. Uh, they class this area as the district centre, which means they're looking for more commercial developments. So finally, we did achieve planning on the site for nine ground floor commercial units and then nine duplex apartments above that, all with roof gardens. So a very sought after, so yeah, exciting yeah. development. Uh, well, sounds sounds like I didn't I didn't charge you enough for it, Matt, if you went on and got a better planning permission than I thought you could get. Well, there you go. You've got to try these things, haven't you? I'm impressed. So, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be an exciting one, um, and we're hoping to start in September. Great. And do you do this on your own, or do you have a partner? How does it work? So, the reason this is really works for us is I, I started doing single new builds on my own, and that was okay while I had a job, you know, managing them myself and, yeah. and carrying on two or three of those. Unfortunately, when we get to the biggest developments, yeah. it was virtually impossible to then yeah. manage the projects and develop myself. Yes, so, I can understand that. So, uh, I teamed up with a good friend of mine. Um, they hadn't had a construction firm and we created a joint company so basically the way it works now is I go away, source the deal, get the funding, investment, uh, look after the planning permission and basically package the deal until it's ready to build and then those guys crack on and, and build out the site and that works really well for me and them because we share the profit and we've both both got our own skill sets and um, yeah combined it it's it's going good. And you then get involved at the end to sell the to sell the product or to rent the product out whatever you're going to do at the end. Yeah absolutely yeah also I'm I'm helping manage it all the way through you know for, from from the office side of it yeah. you know arranging all of the stage releases drawdowns yes. yeah. uh, finance. So, so you like do that, so, so you do the finance yeah. they do the build it's a great partnership and if of course if you're going to have a partner there's no point in having a partner that does the same thing as you you need a partner that is separate skill set and does something differently and in your case so you're you're sourcing the deals of yeah. people like me and then you're and then you're going ahead getting the sorting all out getting the finance and then passing it across to your partner to build out uh, which is a great guy. He's doing all the hard work, by the way. You do realise that, don't you? Some say that. Some say Some that. Say well, you swan around in your nice car. And, <laughs> and everyone thinks it's a great lifestyle. And it's, you know, uh, wants to get up in the morning and to go and develop things. But of course, there's a lot more to it than that. As I keep telling my wife, there's a lot to, more to it, darling, than just getting up in the morning and doing a deal. You know, it's very hard to find the right deals. And it's all about relationships and meeting people you can work with. And Matt, I'm delighted I can work with you. And I'm hoping we can do a lot more deals going forward. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Pleasure. So it doesn't matter what kind of investor or developer you wish to become. You just need to have an interest in what you want to do. There's one thing that unites us all, and that is we all add value to whatever we purchased. Here are some examples of how you can add value and some things you should avoid doing. Property developing is all about adding value. So let's take a simple example of a semi-detached house that perhaps needs refurbishing. But you can do more than that. For instance, has it got a car space? If it hasn't, create one. Creating a car space won't be very expensive and could put up to £20,000 plus onto your property depending on where it is. Garaging can be expensive to build, but again, if you want to build a garage, just be careful because they are expensive to build and may not put that much more on a property than you're spending doing so. With regards to sellers, be careful with sellers because they can be very expensive to do. Tanking a seller, which is what you have to do to make it watertight, can be very, very expensive. So be very cautious about that. I prefer to leave them naked, as it were, just paint the walls and let someone else think there's a bargain to be had by doing the basement, when sometimes there definitely is not. As for attics, yes, you can go up into the roof. That's quite a good thing to do. But again, just be careful how much it will cost to do. Always speak to the local agent to find out how much more value it will put on it. As for the garden, definitely make sure the fencing is new. It's in good, good order. You can go up to six foot. So if you've got a bit of a dodgy next door neighbor, make sure that the garden looks sharp and the fencing is high. The other thing you've got to be careful of 
is if there's a problem you can't solve. And having a hoarder next door or someone like that, a difficult neighbour, is something you may not be able to solve. If that is the case, I'd be very cautious about buying the property in the first place. And that's why, of course, you might be offered it. However, if it just needs decorating and things like that, you could offer to de decorate it for the owner to make yours look better. Now I've given you a taste of the type of developer or investor you could become. In the next part of the show, I'm going to personally demonstrate to you in real life scenarios how you can find a property deal. Now having established what type of developer, investor you want to become and the importance of adding value, which we've mentioned earlier, I'm going now to help you put this into action by showing you where you can find your first deal. The first place I'm taking you to, to find deals might seem obvious. However, there are a few tips and tricks I'm going to show you. We are first going to an estate agent. Hi. Good how afternoon, doing? John. How are you today? Good to see you. Good, yeah, you too. Take a seat. So, in the old days, I used to walk in loads of estate agents and ask them, you know, have they mm -hmm. got any deals for me and yep. get to know them mm -hmm. really, really well and take donuts and yep. coffee and all sorts. I don't do it as much as I should now. Uh, you obviously get a lot of people coming in here mm -hmm. doing exactly that. Yep. What are you looking for from them? Yep. I, we like them just to be courteous as business, so not turn up in the middle of the morning meeting and things like that. Yeah. Um, also, which I always train to my negotiators is looking out for the people that are, are motivated. So if you're recommending a lot of properties or land to somebody and they won't commit to view or they're viewing everything you recommend and they're not making any offers, that's a real sort of telltale that perhaps they're not, they're not motivated and they're not serious about getting into the development game. Absolutely. And also experience is very important. Mm -hmm. If they come in, presumably you want them to know, you want to know exactly what, they've, what they can afford, mm -hmm. what they like to do, have they got an experience in that, mm -hmm. or if not, have they got a partner who's got experience? Yeah, because we also, we don't just like to find them somewhere, we like to help them with the whole journey. Oh, I bet you so, do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. if they're looking at land and yeah. they want to develop, particularly around here, bungalows, yes. we like to give them an end price, of give course. them an idea of how popular they would be. Um, so yeah, we like to... And of course, the unbroken rule, or the should not be unbroken, is that you give it back to the agent who's giving you the business. Absolutely, absolutely. So important, yeah. you need to look after the agent. Mm -hmm. The agent is absolutely so important mm -hmm. in all this. Yep, and we, we always make sure we tell them about anything before it hits right move. That's our that's yeah. our golden rule, it yeah. really is. And you want them to come back within an hour or two to, if you can't get hold of them, they should come back straight mm -hmm. away and either view it or say it's not for mm -hmm. me because rather well, than waste your time. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. And then the final thing really is, is that the financial side of things, until they make an offer, we can't do our verification yeah. process. So if they are viewing a lot of properties mm. um, and they're not making offers, yeah. We then question. I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm always suspicious of people who it? offer, who look at loads of property and offer on nothing. Mm. And yeah. and uh, for me, that's a telltale massive, sign. Massive. One, they don't know what they're doing, and probably they haven't got the money either. Always, always. Super. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. No, you're very welcome. Lovely Good to see advice. You. Thank you. I suppose you could say that my interest in property is down to my parents. My father actually being an estate agent himself. What I'm going to show you now is something that is very special to me and something that very clearly demonstrates the potential for property to make you money. In my hand, I have the ledger that my father started when he bought the estate agent's business in Felixstowe in 1972, right up until I sold the business in 1984. And some of the figures of the property, some of the sale prices in this are amazingly cheap, incredible, and just shows you what the property market has done over the last 40, 50 years. So in 1972, for instance, my father sold a property in Montague Road in uh, Felixstowe, which is a very nice road, for the total of £9,500. We'd all like to buy that for that now. That would now cost you probably six hundred and fifty to 800000 depending um, on its condition. Early in the program, I showed you my first deal, and here it is in black and white. I sold it on the 13th of January 1981 for £8,250 to Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, who were the sitting tenants. So there you have it. It's uh, really something to see it in black and white. Enough of buying and selling through estate agents. 
it's now going to become more exciting and more fun because we're going to go to an auction. When you go into that room, you have no problems. Don't come out with a problem you can't solve. 173 and a half. 174 and a half. 175 and a half. No, at 175,000 pounds. At 175,000 seated on the aisle, 175. At 175,000 pounds, are we all done? At 175,000 once. At 175,000 twice. At 175,000 selling away. Congratulations, sir. Well bid, 175,000. That's lot 10. Here we are in Norwich at Auction House Norwich's auction. 350 people in the room. Brian Baxter, who's a fantastic auctioneer, is doing his work behind me today. People ask me, where do you find deals? Well, there's a number of deals to be bought in the room today, 40 in total. Just make sure you buy the right one and there's good profit in it. I always think auction day is like match days for football fans. It's a very exciting day for everyone. I've been doing it many, many years and I'm still excited about being here today. 12. So, here we are with Brian Baxter. I believe Brian Baxter is one of the, or is the best auctioneer in the UK. One of the reasons for that is because I've known him 30 years, he's a great friend of mine, but also because he is very, very good and he auctioneers at a lot of auctions. Most auctioneers only auction five, seven times a year. This man's doing a hundred a year, all over the country. He's based in Norwich and he's a director of Auction House. Brian. Hello. Looking at it now, mm. we saw it earlier, it's really like uh, the, the aftermath of a football match where I'm John Motson and I'm interviewing the successful manager with the empty stadium behind me. What sort of day have you had? Yeah, you never quite know. You come into the room and it's empty when you arrive an hour beforehand and it gradually fills up, gradually fills up and then you have this atmosphere in the room and we had a really strong buzzing room today and uh, plenty of standing room at the back and the, all the seats were filled and lots of hands. Um, so it's been a really good day. Really, really good day. Really good day. Uh, yeah. and, and, and to compare it to a football match, is similar. At Cambridge United, yeah. we used to pray we're going to get a good gate yeah. and... Uh, and, and we could pay the bank manager uh, yeah. his, the money back we, we borrowed from him. And it's a little bit similar to you. Presumably, depending on the lots, depends how good your day is going to be. Yeah, we, um, we're lucky. We've got some really good clients who bring um, good stock to us regularly. And, uh, and we call them seat fillers, floor fillers. Um, they're, they're properties which are going to create a lot of interest with builders, investors, private individuals. So you've got multiple people. And they're the ones you put at the start of the auction because you know you're going to get a good bid. <laughs> yeah, we're going to put them at the beginning. Beginning or at the end, um, we always try and leave one of the best ones to the end of the auction. Just to keep people just in to the keep room. people sat there. And, and, and I'm very, very conscious of when I'm advising people about auctions to make sure that they've viewed the property, they know if there is an issue with it, they know what that is, and they have the funds ready to buy. Mm. Um, what would your advice be to would-be first-time buy auction buyers? Well, I think you've hit it nail on the head. Um, do, you, do your investigations first. Sort your preparation. Know what you're bidding um, on that property and talk to other people. Get, get some advice from people who've done it before and they know what they're doing. And perhaps turn up a couple of times uh, not, and make sure your hand doesn't go up and, <laughs> and, and, and get the feel of them, get to meet you. I mean, everyone seems to think uh, you are God. Uh, and really the truth is you're like, you're, Moses. you're like Moses and you're happy to talk to everybody as are all your staff here yeah. and most auctioneers in the country are the same you know they you need them mm. to buy yeah. so you're going to be open and helpful as much as you can be and that's so so important mm. uh, at, a, at, at an auction and I think it's really exciting process and I, I always say to people they say they can't find a property I said go to an auction oh we haven't been to an auction before well learn the job learn the job you can you, know, you can do some dry runs before you actually actually go to one and yeah. bid I, I very much agree I um, many of my regular buyers now have started off by coming to uh, an earlier auction watching what happens get a bit of confidence then bid on a lot and ask for advice we're happy to give advice we don't mind sharing our knowledge and hopefully with that little bit of knowledge comes confidence and if you're confident about what you want to buy and you feel good about uh, um, the end result 
uh, then, you, then you're going to buy something which you think is, a, a re, uh, is good for your purposes, whether it's for investment or to do up and sell on. Um, but the auction is there for, for um, your benefit as well. He wants you sitting in that chair. So he's going to encourage you and give you the best of his advice. And he wants you to come back exactly. because he doesn't want exactly. you to sell uh, to so buy the, one property. Exactly. He wants to buy so the last thing you want to do is to sell a property to someone who's not happy with what they've bought. Absolutely. Because yeah. that's no good to anyone. I don't mind squeezing the last ounce of flesh out of someone if they're sitting in the room. So that's you, kind of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've got to set your limit. But I, uh, my, my job is to sell it for as much as I can. Of course you can. Of course um, it is. But you're I, acting for, you're acting acting for, for the, the vendor. vendor at the end of the day. But mm. that doesn't mean there aren't bargains. In every auction, there's lots oh, yeah. of bargains. Yeah. And you just need to find, work, find them. Mm. And buy them. You're always so mean, John. Um, but uh, thank you. Yeah, that, I take that as a compliment. <laughs> you never bid enough. But when you do buy, I know you've bought yourself something which you're very happy. You've with. got to buy right. Absolutely, very buying very right cool. is important. But um, today's auction was a, pure, yeah. uh, a classic example. There's a couple of properties there which I think you can call them bargains. Um, they didn't go for. Would I call them bargains? That's, would, that's the question. Um, I'm not even sure you'd call them a bargain, <laughs> but they were bargains for me. But uh, there was lots of others which yeah. uh, went way beyond what we thought. Brian, thank you so much. Pleasure. And good luck at your next auction, which is two days' time or something. Well, it's similar. tomorrow. In tomorrow. Ipswich. There you yes, go. I yes, said so he does a lot of auctions. So yeah. there you go. Thank you very Brian, much. Brian, thank you. Pleasure. Of course, there are many other ways to find property deals outside an estate agent's office or an auction. And I'm going to run through a few of these with you now. Estate agents, of course, aren't the only places you can find deals. And these days, this is such a powerful tool for everyone involved in property. All the online portals uh, from your sitting room here, you can do so, so much. But there's other ways as well. And some of them are old fashioned, but they work. Deal finders, talking to people. That's a novelty for some people these days. I've worked with a number of deal finders over the years and they've made a lot of money out of me and I've made a lot of money out of them. It's really important, these people are so important to you, you need to look after them, make sure you pay them good fees, find out where they are. There's lots of people who say they can find deals, there's not so many who can. So do your research, get a relationship with them and pay them well for the job they do. You can also go to all these property clubs and so on and property shows these days and network and meet as many people as you can. Then there's advertising of course. You can put an advert in the local paper, properties bought for cash. I've done it on a number of occasions over the years and it's worked quite well for me. And of course if you drive past a property that looks like it's derelict or needs to be bought or sold, there's no, no problem in stopping, getting out, going to the next door neighbour and asking them who owns it. You're likely to get all the information you want from the next door neighbour. Then of course there are planning portals. These are portals produced by the councils with all the planning information on them. Get, it, get on the line, it's all free the information and find out who owns the land that they're about to get planning on. There are of course repossessions. Properties do get repossessed. Banks will tell you it doesn't happen very often. Building sites will tell you the same and bridges even less. I can assure you there's always repossessions available. It's a case of getting hold of the local office of these banks and building societies, find out who's dealing with the repossessions and get hold of the list. From there, it's down to you. It's all very well looking for deals and finding them. But of course, the key is knowing what you're going to do once you've found that deal. What I'm about to show you now is probably one of the biggest risks I took in my property career. However, it was a risk that paid off. It's 1986, I'm 25 years old, and up to that stage, had really bought and sold more than 10 flats at a time. I then get the opportunity to buy this, St Francis Tower here in Ipswich. 74 flats that needed refurbishing and selling on the open market. Up to that stage, it had been known as the White Elephant of Ipswich. I took a calculated risk, a chance, and it paid off. We made 987,000 pounds net profit after all costs and interest. So there you have it. I hope you know now what type of developer or investor you are and you have an idea of how you're going to find your first deal.